<laughs> All right. Uh, so my name is Brian Sack, and I'm the, I'm the homeless outreach specialist for Lincoln Public Schools. And uh, I used to work on the 34th floor of the Trump Tower in New York City in Manhattan. And I had my own office, thank you very much, Lincoln Public Schools. And uh, <laughs> I don't anymore have my own office. And, uh, and I met my wonderful wife, Janelle, who's over here in Embarrass, on a site visit to the University of Nebraska. So I went from working for a corporation so corporate that its letters don't stand for anything. <laughs> Let that sink in. They chose the letters because they thought it strategically sounded good. That's it, no other reason. So I traveled the country, did that kind of stuff, and I met my wonderful wife Janelle on the site visit, quit, and came out here to Nebraska. Uh, but the story that, that I want to tell you is, uh, is a story, uh, a true story, that it's not about me, uh, but about the family that I worked with, uh, and her name is Melissa. Her name is not really Melissa. We're gonna, that's what we're gonna say. And uh, she has a daughter, and um, I heard about her. Uh, she came and walked right into the district office building at 59th and O. And this is unusual for the homeless families that I work with. Usually I hear about the families um, from a domestic violence shelter or from um, uh, the police department or from the Red Cross, but she walks right in and she asks for the homeless guy. So now I am the homeless guy that people are asking for. So that's career progression. Um, and so, so she, she, she gets me, and, and this is when I first started this job, so this is like about two years ago. And, uh, and, and she sits down in the, in the lobby area of Lincoln Public Schools where there is a uh, office manager, receptionist, uh, master of the universe, boss of the universe, of our office, as we all know that person is in every office. Um, and, and so she, she's all of a sudden paying very close attention to her computer because the, this lady starts telling me her story. And her story is, is not one that a lot of people would enjoy living. So she is just like eyes glued on her Facebook page, you know, whatever she's doing. Because she's, hearing all of this and, 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 and listening, but not wanting to listen and not wanting to know that I know that she's listening. So that was, that was an interesting experience too. So she, she's, this, this lady is telling me her story and it, it goes like most homeless families do in Lincoln. Uh, last year, we year with 500 homeless students in Lincoln Public Schools. 500 is a lot. That's a lot of kids. That's bigger than any elementary school uh, put together. And so she's telling me her story, and it's about domestic violence. Domestic violence is nasty for a thousand reasons. A thousand and one, however high you can count. It causes homelessness because mom leaves with the kids. Boyfriend, baby daddy, whoever he is, husband stays. And so this is what happened. And she had stayed with a friend for a while, which is what usually happens. 70% uh, of all the families that I work with aren't in shelters. Not because they don't want to be, the shelters are full. 70% because they don't have any place else to go besides a friend's house. And so she's saying that she can't stay at this friend's house anymore, which also happens. And I'm talking to her about the, about the mission as a possibility. And, and she's breaking down and crying and talking about how this is not something that, that she can do. Um, and the reason I tell her story is because her story is, is indicative of most of the families that I work with. She's a hardworking single mom, she's white, most families I work with are white. This town's 80% white, stands to reason most poor folks are white. Uh, and she's worked her whole life. And she graduated from high school, had good jobs, and she has had this horrible partner that she was living with. And so she left. And so she, she's crying, she doesn't want to do it, and we talk about it, and she decides to move to the mission with her daughter. She stays in the mission for about four months, which is pretty typical of a stay, and she, uh, she, helped, she finds an apartment. We work together, she finds an apartment, um, and she gets a job, and she doesn't have a car, uh, so she has to walk to work. So Kawasaki, if anyone works at Kawasaki, is a wonderful place to work. Wonderful place to work. First shift starts at 6 a.m. What time does Star Train start? No, 8. No, Star Train, you cannot work first shift at Kawasaki if you need public transportation. So that limits her the places that she can work. And the reason I say that is because she can do much better than Quick Shop, but Quick Shop is near to her house. Uh, so transportation is a big deal. Transportation causes homelessness when your car breaks down. 
your piece of junk, 1999 Dodge Durango, that you got at auto for right, which, which charges you 15% interest, you know, daily, basically, uh, because you got zero dollars down. It's a bad deal. That makes life much more challenging for her. Uh, but the reason why I tell you her story is because she beat this. And she beat it by her attitude. She decided that she was done with it. Most families, it takes seven times for, for a woman to leave a man, usually. And there is domestic violence in LGBT relationships. Most folks are talking about in heterosexual relationships. So she did that seven times, and she, she would tell you it was seven or more. And she left. And she got this apartment. And then what happens? What's inside that apartment? Nothing. Nothing is the answer. When you're homeless and you're doubled up and you're homeless and you're in a friendship home, you're homeless and you're in a mission, when you stop being homeless, you get really excited and you leap and you move into your apartment and there's nothing in there. Um, so it's a housing unit. It's not a home. And so we worked together and we got a whole bunch of really nice stuff donated uh, by a family. Uh, she had some stuff uh, from a, we got from a, we got with a trailer that the Bay owns. The Bay is a wonderful skateboard. Uh, and she moved into this place, and uh, she is fine. And I want to tell you this, not because like Chris asked me to tell a story, and Chris Maley is an amazing teacher, uh, but because homelessness is episodic for families. Homelessness is not the guy on O Street who's been there for 10 years, it's not. And actually, he has a house like, down the road, he owns a home, uh, he's okay. Uh, family homelessness is episodic because bad things happen to people who don't have a great education and people who don't necessarily have the job skills. You don't know what you don't know. If you've never been homeless before, 90% of the families that I work with have never been homeless before, you might not know about the Center for People in Need. You don't know the miracles that Baby Bash is working. You don't know about that. You don't know about the food bank. You don't know about food distribution. You don't know about me. So the fact that she had the courage to walk into the school district office building, which is kind of an imposing place, and tell me this story, we ended her homelessness. She'll never be homeless again. She is the most frugal person I've ever met. She probably has more savings than, than I do or we do. So my message to you is that when you're, when, you're, when you're living your life, walking through your life, know that the person who is helping you will work who is working, all the families I work with work. It's no fun to be poor. And if you don't have any money, you don't have any money. People work. When you're working, when you're buying something at Pinnacle Bank Arena, when you're at the quick shop, when you're doing your, your business, know that the person who, who, is, who is taking your money and who is doing things for you is a person who could very well be homeless. Um, so be nice. Thank you.